Hi everyone, welcome back to day nine of my 13 Frights before Halloween for October 26, 2021. Today is going to be a real quick session for this project, for this um, large folio album we've been working on. Today we're going to make a fun slider element, just a decorative piece for the inside of our large spine area. So that's what I'm going to show you, which will give us more time for some sort of bonus project. I haven't decided yet, but we'll have something after this. So here's our album. We're going to open it up so that we see the area here with the spine. So if you open this up completely, you see your waterfall and the uh, wider spine. I think it's two and a half inch spine. And then if we open all this up, we have our hidden pages section here. So we're going to put this right here in the middle. It's just decorative. It has no real purpose except that it's fun. So you need one piece of your cardstock. Which of course, I'm using the artisan that's three quarters wide by 10 and 5 eighths tall. And then from the black check, I cut some decorative paper that is um, 10 and a half. Did I tell you that this one's 10 and 5 eighths? Yes, 10 and 5 eighths tall. And this is 10 and a half by uh, 5 eighths. So this is going to glow right here. Okay, and then I have a little decorative strip that I cut out that's the 10 and a half and whatever decorative border you want to use. This one says, pumpkins fat and witches lean wish you fun on Halloween. It's kind of funny. So I'm going to take my glue. I'm going to put glue on the back side of this decorative strip here, paper. Now you're going to need one chipboard piece that you've selected out of the collection that you're using. This we're just going to glue and it's going to be a little shorter on each end than the actual piece, just like that. So burnish that on and then go ahead and put your little border trim on, whatever you've decided you want to use. You could have a say in or it can just be you know, dots or stars or whatever you want. The back side of this would have worked too. But anyway, I'm going to center it right here. Whoops, don't let it slide on you. That didn't work very well. Let me lift it up and put it back where it belongs. Burnish it with my fingers. Okay. Then I need a scrap of cardstock that is one and a half by one and three quarters. One and a half by one and three quarters. So we want this wider. This is what's going to wrap around than the height. But you need to look at your chipboard piece that you chose. And of course when it's wrapped it doesn't matter. You want to make sure that the width of it is shorter than the actual chipboard. So I'm just going to trim mine down just a little bit. So you will adjust yours however you need to. I'm going to make sure that the height is below my chipboard piece. Now this was a tag, so it has a hole in it. And I have cut about a yard of uh, black jute Baker's string, uh, not Baker's string, but I call it button string, um, burlap string. You can get it on Country Craft Creations. And I'm going to tie this on here. I want it long because I'm going to add a couple of spider charms. So and my black is kind of ravelly, but that's okay. That adds to the spookiness of Halloween, right? So I'm going to tie through that hole, that tag hole. get it to the top and then I'm going to tie a bow. It's not going to be a very big bow because you don't want it sticking where you into your elements that open and close of your pages. So I'm just going to tie a bow here at the top, kind of short loops. Let's see, probably about like that. And then I'm going to put some glue on that knot because I don't want it coming undone. 
to put some glue into that knot of that string and let that dry or press it in. I'm going to let it dry. Okay, now I want to hang my charms. I have a black metal spider charm and a black, I mean an orange one from my stash. I cannot tell you where I got them because I don't remember. I've had them in my stash for a while. So my lights just flicker down. All right, so I'm going to bring it up here. I don't want it too terribly long. Um, just tie a knot into it. Up here. Missed my loop. Okay, tie a knot. This is going to be a slider, so it's going to go up and down. So I did not put a charms on the other one. So we're going to see how this works. So I double knot it. And then I trim that off. And I'm going to put a little glue in the knot as well. And then I'm going to hang this other one on the other string. And of course, these are very flat. You want to make sure if you're using something like this, a charm or something, that it's very flat. You don't want anything thick. And I'm going to let it be a little bit shorter, I think, here on the string. And just tying the knot. Make sure I don't get the other one tied in with it. Okay, there we go. And double knot it. So you'll see this one's a lot shorter. That's what I wanted. I want it kind of, you know, two different lengths. This one I may want shorter. I don't know. I'm going to leave it that way for now. Cut this off and add a bit of glue. Onto the knot so he doesn't come untied. Okay, so we have that. Now we take this piece here. We want the longest and you're just going to fold it around this other piece you made. Just kind of crease it. And then where it overlaps, it should overlap just a little. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on that one side edge and join them together. And wipe off any excess glue. Just kind of hold them down. You want to make sure that this piece slides like that. So I'm holding it down on the back and letting the glue grab and then I'm going to burnish it. Once it's stuck it's pretty good but I'm going to take a little bit of my tape. Now you can use clear tape, black tape. No I can't tear it. I have this gaffer's tape. It's pretty strong like a construction type tape. It's not it's gaffer's tape. It's stronger than uh, like masking or paper tape. You could actually make your albums join them together or boxes with it. I've done that before. So I'm going to put that on there and burnish that in. That's just to secure it some more. And then you make sure it didn't get glued down and it does slide up and down the whole lengths. Kind of work it back and forth. Now take your chipboard piece that you made and see this is going to fit over that just like that and the glue is only going to go right here in the center of your slider piece and then you put your chipboard over it put it on there the way you want it to look press it down and let it dry you see I got my spiders hanging down I do think I want this orange one a little bit shorter because I can tie it up a little more. Yeah, I don't know if I can because they're not. So we're going to take it up in little increments. Maybe just a tad shorter, huh? 
So make sure you know what length you want your, if you're doing a charm. You don't have to do a charm if you don't want to. I just thought with the spiderweb paper that having a charm spiders on there might be fun. Plus, it bugs me when there's a hole in a chipboard piece and there's not a brad or something inside of it. So that works okay. Now then you take your album and where your spine piece is, you're just going to glue each end. Put glue, maybe about an eighth of an inch of glue across the top piece and the bottom. Make sure you're adding it on to the right direction. And we center it with the pattern paper right in the center, top, and bottom. And then we burnish that, let that glue dry, and now we have a slider piece that goes. Once it's dried, don't do it until it's dried good. Make sure it's straight. So it's going to slide up and down. You can put it in different places in your spine. But like I said, that's just for fun. Has no real purpose to it. Except to be decorative and is fun to slide up and down. So there's the slider piece. I wish I had made this spider shorter, but it's still going to work. So that is day nine. Tomorrow for day 10, I'm going to show you how to make the cover slide element like I made for the Master Detective. I'm going to see what I've got in the paper, pattern papers to see what I can, if we can incorporate it into our actual cover. But I do want to show you how to make that particular kind of slider element. So that's it for today, except for the bonus. So stay tuned for that, for the bonus project. For today's bonus project, we're going to go to the bathroom. No, we're going to go to the bathroom and get an empty toilet paper roll. Okay, I know some people this bothers them to make a craft out of this. Toilet paper rolls are clean, really, because, well, I'm the only one who changes toilet paper rolls. So my hands are clean. <laughs> and it's always on the toilet paper roller. It's never sitting around for someone to pick up and use. No, it's on it. So when it's empty, I change it out. So it's clean. If it bothers you still, uh, get a paper towel tube, empty one, and cut it down to the length of a toilet paper roll, and that is four inches. Or if it really, really bothers you, take some cardstock and make you a, when you flatten it down, you'll want a four inch uh, piece that's sealed up like a pocket. Uh, by, once it's flattened down, about two and five eighths. So that's what we've got to work with. I've got scraps of paper. I'm going to make a gift card holder and let's trim this little piece here that's sticking out. We don't want that. And so you want to really burnish this down. Um, sometimes when I do this, I actually roll it through my big shot or die cut machine without a die and really flatten it down. So if you have a brayer or something, you can really get it flat it is cardboard and I'm going to just I'm doing it quickly for this thing and I'm sure you sorry if I'm shaking you but uh, yeah my camera stand is well no it's not but it still may shake the table <laughs> don't know what I'm saying my husband moved it for me let me grab my ink so this is going to be just a little gift card holder why am I making out of the toilet paper roll well just because I can I'm sure I'm going to put something in it that makes it different on the inside. Like a slider piece maybe or something. I don't know. So I'm going to keep burnishing it, trying to get it really flat here. It does need to be flattened more. Okay, I'm using scraps of paper. So this one was already cut. So it is, let me keep my ruler out. Two and three eighths, or two and a half 
two and a half or this two and five eighths piece. And this one I say was four. So this trim down just a tiny bit to get my trim up. Three and seven eighths. Okay. Slice the end off there. Ink it if you want. And I'm going to glue this to the one side of my toilet paper tube. Now, I want it darker ink. So I'm just going to grab some black ink that I have handy here. And I'm going to ink, ink it more. And I'm not one to grab a applicator or something. I just grab my ink pad and start inking. So I want it kind of dark, the black on both sides. And you can ink it in a little, oh, about a quarter of an inch or so from the edges. So it's more black and not the toilet paper roll color. But I don't want it perfect, okay? So, yeah, I'm getting ink all over me. Okay, so ink that up pretty well on the sides. And this was black, a lawn fawn black ink that I had sitting here. And now I'm going to glue this on right here. Find my glue. And then I'll cut another piece for the back. Put this right on here. So this I'm working on the front right now. Scoot it over just a smidge. There we go. Okay, burnish that down. And you may have to use extra glue because of that. Now on the end here to my left, which would be the front facing up would be the left. I'm going to put glue in there and I'm sealing this up. I'm going to burnish that to get it sealed. Okay, I kind of like the inking on this side. So I think I'm going to put this the front and I'm going to use the bats. So I'm going to cut this. Um, a little smaller. I'm going to go three and three quarters by two and eighths. Two and five eighths is there. Two and three eighths. And see how that looks right there. Yeah, I like the black part showing of the tube. So I used the bats. This is going to be my front side now. And the dots are on the back. It like this, okay, just like that. Now, the gift card pocket is going to be on the back, so I'm going to cut this down. The width is okay, I'll make it about an inch and a half. It right in here and I want to notch it so I'm going to grab my envelope because I like that notch really well what did I say this was this piece is three and three quarters so one and a half I'm trying to see my center piece center I'm just eyeballing it. That works. Okay, so this is where your gift card will go in. So I put it here, and I'm going to glue on the bottom side. And I know you've seen this paper, or will see this paper several times in my bonus projects, but it's some authentic twilight that I've had for in my stash, and I had quite a bit of it, so I'm using it. And that's what you need to do. You need to go to your stash, shop in your stash, and Find papers you've had for several years and use it. Quit hoarding it. And maybe you've already done a project or two with it and you have some left over. That's great. Go ahead and use it for some of these gift ideas. So that's where your card would go. Right in there. Okay, so now we have that. Let's decorate the front. Okay, so I'm going to go to my stash of stuff that I have. Let's see what we got in this box. 
we don't need a torso. This little Frankenstein and the bride are cute. These are just some stickers I had left over. A werewolf, a mummy. Yeah. Ooh. Monster. We can have a monster mash on the front of this. So I'm just going to start peeling these guys off. I'm not going to bother with the glue. I'm just going to stick them down. There's my monster and my mummy. And I'm going to put the werewolf in. So I've had these for quite a while in my stash and just hadn't used them. And I'm just going to put them all on the front here. There's Frankie. I like that. Kind of overlap them a little bit. And get them all on there. I think that's cute. Okay. Super simple, easy. Okay, so we've got our gift card back here. Do we want it to say something back here or do we need something on this? What else have we got? Hmm. I'm going to look and then I'll come back, okay? So I looked in my Heidi Swap pieces. I found this Beware that I like and I'm going to glue it on the back. I mean behind the little monsters and I'm going to just fit it in there. I think I can slide it in behind them, especially the werewolf, and then I can glue him down if I need to. So I just kind of want to layer that in there like that. Okay, and I'll put a little more glue behind him just in case each one of them. We don't want them, we don't want them falling off. Okay, sometimes the, the stickiness of stickers doesn't work very well. Okay, so there we go. Press them all down good. So there's the front beware. And then I took a bat from Heidi Swap and I inked the back of it. And I'm going to just glue it right here. And it kind of comes up off the top just a tiny bit. So I'm going to glue it on the bottom. So I'm getting ink all over me, but that's the nature of crafting, right? So I'll put it right there. There's my cloth that I can wipe that glue off. So that's the front. And then on the back, I'm going to, um, this is another hottie swap and I got ink on it and I added a little spooky sticker, a little raised sticker and I'm gonna just glue him on the back. Oh yeah, and I got my washi tape. I love my caution. So you've probably seen it several times. You may see it again. <laughs> so. I think two words of caution and I just rip it and of course as always put glue especially on the end of it maybe a little bit in the middle because it will it will peel off so I'm going to just kind of put it here at the bottom right across like that caution beware and caution wipe the glue off now I have to decide I've done all this and I haven't decided yet what I want to do on the inside. So I'm going to think of something for that real quick. For the inside, I decided I want to make a little card so that you could write a message on it. Okay, I'll make it a tag. So I added this boo sticker and then I'm going to just um, round the corner, the two end corners, use the three eighths. If I can get that to work on this paper. Doesn't like this paper for some reason. There we go. Round those. See, it kind of leaves a raggedy there. I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. All right. And then I'm going to angle cut one corner here to make a tag. I'm going to take this, flip it opposite side, line it up, and use it as a pattern for my other angle that. So that makes that tag point then i'm going to punch a hole try to get it right i'm going to use my paper doll so i can see where i'm putting it a large one i'm going to put it right here in the centerish right there so it says boo and it's going to go in like this okay and then i'm going to tie a string on it so 
and take my black fine tip marker. There we go. And I'm just going to add some lines to write on. Just freehand lines. They don't have to be straight or anything. So my pen is acting like it's running out of ink. Just like that. Then I'm going to add some squiggly ones around the top and the sides. Okay, then my string, my orange black baker's twine, I'm going to cut off some of that, fold it in half, get me a loop, feed my loop through the hole I punched, pull that, then tie a knot down here at the end, or tag. Okay, just like that. And that goes in here, and you would pull it out by that. And there's the back, and that's where your gift card would go. So that's a quick little easy gift card to make with some stickers, some washi tape, um, your bat, you know, my bat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, uh, I'm going to strengthen, it, strengthen him up a little bit. Nouveau Crystal Glaze is what I like to use. And I'm going to put this on here, and then I'm going to let it dry. And this will finish it up. So I'm just going to coat the whole little bat, and it will make him glossy and raised. He'll look like a little epoxy sticker, sort of. Just all over the entire bat. Just kind of squeeze it out. And then I spread it with the tip, get the whole back covered, because you can't see it, it's, not, it's going to be a bit before it dries, but that's going to strengthen it up right in here where I tend to, where it's sticking out and it's going to bend a little bit, I don't want that. So there's that, that's the finished TP toilet paper gift card holder. Okay, check back tomorrow for another 13 Frights Before Halloween as we finish working on the large folio album. And this is your bonus project for today.